we're just taking it day by day. Yep, same, yeah. you know, yeah. I think that's what you have to do. Yeah. You plan ahead and you can see ahead and you can see potentials and see timelines. But when it comes to actually living your life, you have to kind of take it day by day, don't you? And You really do. I mean, it's a, it's an interesting topic because I don't know. It's like, uh, well, I, it's like we're being removed or forced out of thinking of the future. And yes, of course, certainly mm -hmm. we've all done a lot of work to let go of the past and all the stories and then all this information and data and code and upgrades are coming in, yeah. you know? Totally. <laughs> yeah, and then you're like, okay, how do I do this? And it, I don't know, how, I, right. I, I can't, I've been telling Morgan, I can't, and I'm a communicator, but I can't put my finger on it. Uh, like I can't put my finger on what's actually happening. I don't think there's any words for it. It's like- It's, it's very like, difficult yeah. to put it's it like into a, words. Mm. It's like a calmness is coming through, a relaxation worries left you know uh and it's just like a space more than okay you got to do this you got to do that you just kind of just get up and you know and and well live in the moment you know just i know that sounds cliche but yeah it it is it's that zero point field yeah. but then it's very easy to slip back into that chaotic 3d yeah and same time have a conduit or stream to the higher dimensions and then you have to balance all of those within you yeah and it's it's um it's a really difficult journey because i think around 2012 leading up to 2012 and just after 2012 there was a very high expectation of going into this and the feeling of ascension and the feeling of of all that connection and the fact that um at last the truth was coming out into the world and all the all the, the falsehoods and, and the the trapping systems were breaking down and we had all of that hope and and now it seems like we've gone through and everything has to be metaphor really to explain the energy exactly but now like yeah but now it seems, seems like we've gone through um you know instead of emerging uh, between where, where perhaps worlds are separating or, or dimensions are separating it's almost like there's been a complete split a complete bifurcation or trifurcation a splitting off yeah and yeah. we're feeling that by one minute having this merge of multi-dimensionality within us and, and and existing within that and the next minute it's very easy to compartmentalize those and feel as though when you're in one dimensional state you've lost the merge yeah. with the others i mean that's how i've been feeling over the last well since the beginning of this year one minute a complete merge and having that unity and that oneness with all the dimensional states at the same time and the next minute being stuck in a 3d paradigm yeah. and walking around and thinking where's the higher dimensions where where are the, where's my higher self? Where's that connection? I feel lost yeah. in 3D and I feel cut off. And a lot of this is to do with this last stand energy yeah. that is coming in from that service to self darker field that, that they're pushing more than they ever have to try to hold on to those old paradigms. Yeah. And sometimes we can get caught up in them and that bureaucracy and that sort of, um, red tape and all, and all of the government systems that we're all becoming free from, we can get caught up in. And then we remember, ah, oh, but we are multidimensional beings. We do not need to be trapped within this 3D system. Okay, let's remember our training. Let's go back to mm -hmm. those starseed memories and let's breathe and come back to that zero point. And then when you go back up again into that merge and move into the higher dimensional state, then everything seems to be not irrelevant but it certainly seems to be no longer this scary trapping yeah. feeling you move above and i think that the star seeds at the moment that's where everyone is we're all yeah. in these these different states trying to navigate the third dimensional realm that's kind of changing so much and in many yeah. ways it, it looks as though it's falling to pieces and is yeah. completely you know crashing around our feet yeah. and still remaining within that hope and that new earth and that new paradigm and and so it's it's easy one minute and it's blissful one minute and you think yeah. you've got it and then <laughs> the next minute 
Yeah. You I love you, man. What's happened to me? I've lost it again. <laughs> I love you. Yeah. That, you know, what I love is, what I love about what I do is people that are just being real about it. You've got you know? to be. Everybody's got different, you know, templates or, you know, different functions in, in, the, in the universal jigsaw puzzle. But for you to have been out, out front for so long and still have that, it's, it's the humanity of it. It's, it's, yeah. that's the whole thing. It's like, you know, the, the, uh, the human is the hero. The human is actually becoming a citizen of the universal family. You know, it's like, it's like we're becoming, we are the, 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 the new grid. We are the, the, uh, the dimension. We carry that with us. I mean, it's, it's, it's just like, I don't know, it's mind blowing. We've been having a lot of stuff happen to us, especially since she got back, uh, the third week of April. But before we get into any of that, and I'm so glad you brought up what you did because I have some missing pieces that I'm trying to fill in and you've already started to fill it in because you've kind of got, uh, you got a beat on um, what's going on in the global and the external. You've written about a lot of that since uh, always really. And then of course the, the higher dimensional stuff. Let me just welcome you. Magenta Pixie, our beloved sister, uh, warrioress, uh, Newlywed, huh. big big uh, shout out to her her beautiful beloved. And uh, this is about her fourth or fifth time on. We've always had a really really uh, activating uh, collaboration. So I just want to say thank you on behalf of everybody for what you do and for coming coming back and sharing space with us today. Thank you, thank you so much, Todd. <laughs> and everybody, welcome everybody. I usually do a little roll call because you're all part of this vortex that we create every time we get together. Uh, we've had some amazing shows uh, the last few days, amazing synchronicities, and I think this is going to be a, a, a real down-to-earth, raw conversation as usual with Magenta, with a little bit of magic and fairy dust. <laughs> so, but you were talking about the, you know, this external, you know, the external collective experience, which would include all the elements of, you know, that, that we know are, are out there and that have come to the surface, you know, be it the Vatican, be it the, the, uh, you know, what's stuff going on with Q, Trump? Uh, you know, we're starting to see some some divine feminines step into positions of power. I think in Iceland now, uh, New Zealand, I think one of the strong South American countries. So you're seeing that play out. Then you've got the the uh, the templates of 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 uh, the mission, so to speak, the divine consorts or whatever you want to call them, twin rays, twin flames. That component is coming into play. We're seeing a bunch of people pairing up very quickly. The intelligence we've been receiving when we commune has, has talked about that. I saw Shakina Rose the other day who doesn't really pull in the what people call the twin flame uh, information. But the last time she was on the show, she did. And then she did a post a couple of days ago. And she said, I don't get this stuff. But this this vibration or this consciousness uh, is, is really coming into play now. Maybe that's a good place to start because I know you have a pretty good beat on that. What is uh, going on with the couplings with these divine unions? What's their function? Uh, do you, can you give us any uh, information on that? Lots and lots of reasons as to why the couples are coming together in that way. But all the star seeds as a group, they kind of reverberate off one another. Yeah in a way like um like a giant signal the more people that are aware the more people that are downloading these light codes and opening their hearts and living this way that creates a larger signal and every time you open up yourself you catch that and you, you're like um magnifying one another yeah. and so the divine couplings are, are part of that. That's kind of like um, a magnification for you in your individual third dimensional life as, yeah. as you come together. I mean, some of these couplings are not necessarily yeah. just physical. Some individuals have made major twin flame connections with um, souls that are non-physical. But yes. for those that are in physicality, they're coming together because now is the time that that magnification is needed and every time a couple 
um, learns and works together and comes together and and uh, g goes through challenges and overcomes those challenges that's all added to this this grid of light that we all connect with um the the, the couplings are there for it's, it's almost like they're little diamonds if you like crystals yeah. attracting yeah. um a higher energy to them and They've been getting ready to come together for a lot for many years. You know, yes. this started, I would say, back in um, before the year 2000, but now more so than ever. And also, the awareness is more heightened. People are more aware of what the divine coupling is, and what a twin flame is, and what a soulmate is. People are no longer in resistance to not having a relationship. They're relaxing, they're understanding that they can find divinity within themselves, and that they don't need to be in a divine relationship to find divinity and spirituality. And because they're relaxing and, and, and falling in love with themselves, they are creating that divine counterpart in their own lives, and they're connecting with their soulmate twin flame partners so there are many many reasons as to why it's happening that way an individual reason and a more global one yeah yeah it's it's uh, it's becoming very you know there's a lot of evidence uh, building up you know things that, that even the human brain can say yeah that's happening uh one of the other things that's been coming out on the shows and, and in morgan and i's personal experiences this year especially over the last few weeks uh, to include a really impactful experience we had about 10 days ago where we actually uh, stepped into a monad and it wasn't the first time but that but what was interesting about it was the uh, four four of the energies in the monad uh, asked us if we wanted to merge and so each one of them merged with us we had like a triad merge uh, we both went through it. Her eyes were closed. Mine were open. That's a lot of times how we do it. And so we experienced it. And now each one of them was an individual merge. We had to go through the monad darkness, so to speak, be before it happened. Collectively, we went through the darkness. In that period of going through it, we had to own it, which we did. We came out the other side. Then as each one came to us, they showed us their personal darkness, right? And the same process happened. And then we merged with each one. And the interesting thing was that each one of them, once we merged, or as it was completing, we saw who they were. They told us, they showed us who they were, and they were incarnated and friends. So that was pretty weird. Now, that's just an example. There's been a lot of people talking about the monad lately. Grace Solaris has been writing about it. Uh, we talked to Franco, the... The, uh, the other day about it. Uh, do you have any info or intel on the <laughs> on the monad? <laughs> I can see you do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the nine have been talking to me about that as well. Um, oh, it's so complex, really, because there's again so many levels to that monad, that monadic structure, and um, again, metaphor is often the best way to explain what that means. So, on one level. Um, on one level, this is a visitation from a higher dimensional structure that is a living geometry. It's a living plasma light geometry that contains um, either a section of intelligence or a unified intelligent field, depending on where you are with your connection with that monad. So it is an intelligent plasma light structure outside of you that is a living being but also at the same time it is your own yeah. memory field that is yeah. coming uh, up into your awareness it is an activated aspect of dna of quantum dna all of these things are the same thing so it's very much our memories it is the crystalline plasma silicate silicon structure within the dna perhaps we might know that as the merkaba or the light body it's 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 that um aspect of the dna that the scientists call junk dna that's becoming activated yeah. we're seeing this monad as a 
structure outside of us, um, which it is because it is a separate intelligence, but we also see this as within us. And this monad is either we perceive it as giving us intelligence or we perceive it as bringing memory up inside us. It is a merge and that is how a great majority of star seeds will um, will move into this. It is a merge with how you explained, with, yes. with a being showing different yeah. aspects of itself, um, showing itself as an externalized aspect of you and, yeah. and an externalized aspect in its own right. Sometimes the monad can come in the form of a piece of creation. So it can be a piece of music. It can be a book. It can be um, some any 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 small piece of creation, and and it's complete in its unity. And you can take um, part of that monad and make a merge with it. It it's kind of like um, instead of looking at linear uh, rote memory. So say for example, you were to write a poem. Right. And you would think, right, I'm going to write a poem. I'm going to write line one and then line two. And then I'll think about line three. And then I'll look at the poem and I might change it about a bit as I edit it. And it comes into the memory in a rote way, in a linear yeah. way. And that's the 3D carbon-based memory structure at work. But the, the monad is a quantum memory. It's yeah. where the entire poem and, and, a, and a whole book of poems and a whole stream yeah. of books of poems all come into your mind at once. Yeah. So it's, it's also can be called, um, um, you've got bilocation, trilocation, multilocation. So a monad can be any of those. It's usually more of a multilocational structure and it can be omnipresent. So as it sits there, or, or you merge with it as, as if you're perceiving it as another being. You yeah. are actually downloading um, a huge amount of information or creative information, light, all at once. And it, it remains within you. It's like a huge activation. Yeah. And yes. then afterwards, you have to then um, sort it out into a, a linear stream. Each person will see that monad in a very different way. So I'm seeing it as a, um, a plasma structure, geometric structure that is a um, knowledge and memory, but other people may see a monad as an actual entity, a yeah. light being, an angel structure, um, an avatar type structure. There, yeah. are, there are so many ways to view this because this isn't, um, there, it, this isn't a one size fits all way of, of connecting with the monad, but what it is, is monadic consciousness or avatar consciousness. And it's interesting that sh you should mention this because the nine have told me that that is the consciousness we are experiencing right now when it comes to the starseed collective on this planet for this solstice gateway. Yeah, that, 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 really, re that really resonates. And, uh, and I love what you said about the different ways because obviously the universe is going to communicate to each one of us in its own unique way or however we, we can, uh, you know, equate with it. So, you know, like everything you're saying is, is, uh, you know, is verifiable through our experience. I mean, we had a first uh, monad experience where right here where we live, where before she left the first time and we were brought into it, it was a circle and, and, uh, and they said, you, you both, unconsciously come every night tonight you're going to consciously come and the last time you were conscious was 60 years ago when we planned all this and you two agreed as part of it you guys agreed to to come down here and do this you know do sology meet up and all the things that go with it then what happened the next time was we ended up going up and there was 12 now the first one there was 24 so it was like 12 of hers, 12 of mine. It's kind of how we saw it. We went up to the 12, and and this was when we were, well, same situation. We're laying in bed, hands just, you know, together, palms together. And so one stepped up, and the one that stepped up to speak to us was containing all of her essence and all of mine. So it was a unified soul of both of us, I guess, or however you would put that, a unified energy of both of us. And uh, so that was interesting. And then the next one, the next big one was the one I described earlier. But in each case, 
uh, in each case, it, it involved downloading a whole lot of coding and, and even, you know, for, she visualized it one way and I experienced it another way, but it was very much what you're describing. And there also seemed to be like in that big shadow of the collective shadow, when we stepped into that first one or the first one I described, that seemed to be like a cluster energy, you know? So even though it was presenting itself as, 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 you know, what we might call darkness, it was still that, that composite, that collective uh, wisdom or collective energy or collective essence of the entire thing. So the last thing I would say too, is what we've received is when we tap in, because I asked that one that was up there, I said, are you connected to these other two? And they said, yes. Yes, we are, but we're here. And then each one of these 12 or so has its own monad. So like what you're saying, I can see because like you hit one and the math is like not even anything near what this planet can understand. You you connect with one and the, you, there's a monad and each one of those has a monad and it just blows up, you know? So it's, it's, it's yeah. like warp speed, yeah. That is what it is. It is warp speed. And funnily, you should say that. Um, we need to be within our consciousness at the speed of light to actually activate this monadic structure. So what you're seeing here is the DNA, which is made up of, on a very base level, 12 um, yeah. presentations, 12 angelic structures, 12 chemical bonds. And then behind each 12, there is another 12, that they are sets of 12s. What we're moving into right now on a star seed level, because the star seeds, as in the awakened individuals, yeah. are their consciousness is controlling the timelines for this planet right now for the first time in millennia, wow. um, which is, and it's been that way sort of increasing since 2012. So the star seeds have really sort of come into their own. That isn't necessarily uh, visible and tangible within the third dimensional reality, but that is the situation. And when those star seeds come together, they all experience similar things that come in kind of waves. And at the moment, it is very much a unity consciousness. Now, that's very easy to say. It's, it's very cliched and you can say, yeah. oh, unity consciousness, we're all one. And that's all true. And it is just one very simple concept. It doesn't really need to have this difficult, um, complex geometric structure to understand. Uh, one can just be within that unity consciousness, which is a very crystal, crystalline, flowing, being way of, of connecting with oneself and with the universe. But there is another aspect to this starseed consciousness, and that is the indigo aspect, the indigo revolution, the indigo rising, which is a striving for answers. It isn't just about, oh, I'm getting my memories back. The indigo energy is very much about why is this happening? What does this mean? What is this metaphor? What is an angel? What, what is my right. place in this universe? Because if you are moving back into a original strand formation within your DNA field, you are going to want to know when you come into this indigo energy, what is happening to you yeah. at the same time. If you go to, analytical and two indigo you can lose yourself within that and forget about the being and the oneness so putting unity consciousness as a as a crystalline structure and a knowing aside and moving into the more indigo um, expression what you are going to be experiencing is what unity consciousness means um, in a way that the third dimensional brain can understand. And what that would be is to understand the compartmentalization first so that then you can come into the unification. And so you will step by step understand what it, it means to be at one and in a state of, of unity with all. The first thing you do is understand that you are everything. You are unity within yourself. You are a unified, infinite structure. And you learn about yourself and what you are in this reality. And you learn that everything is within you. All yeah. of source is within you. Everything is contained within you. All the universe is contained within you. And the next step to that once you have 
and you wouldn't think there'd be a next step to understanding one's infinite nature, but there, there is, because then you realize that everybody else on this planet, especially the star seeds, are all individually understanding their infinite nature. And so what you do is you connect with them as they also move into a plasma field like body Merkaba activation like you are, they are all raising their memories, they are all activating their um, original strand DNA, and you, you don't just connect with them. And it isn't really even a merge or a unification, it can, it can be experienced as <coughs> a locking into place with them. So you yeah. become this geometric structure of this quantum 12 and 12 and 12 with a monad and going into that monad and then more monads, everything that you're saying that you've been seeing, you then sort of energetically and geometrically lock in, in place with all of the other individuals that are doing this as well. And you become a grid and you start to feel that you are part of that grid and you start yeah. to feel this inconsequential little me i'm just a tiny tiny little fractal in this huge huge grid uh, but then you move back into this um this empowerment that takes you away from being an inconsequential small little piece of the grid and you realize you are such an important part of the grid the grid cannot be made without you and then you realize that you are the grid so you're moving in and out of these different stages of unity consciousness you are moving from a compartmentalization and, an, and a pure individualization into this unity consciousness that is the indigo um analysis the indigo field and that's yeah. what you are going through you and morgan right now that's yeah. what you are experiencing and everything you're saying in your completely unique way and yeah. so are all the other star seeds on the planet in their completely unique way yeah we've we've had uh, yeah we've had evidence of that too like for instance uh, uh a few weeks ago we we had physical herioscamos for the first time uh, and it was explosive. It was it was uh, four hours of uh, our you know our, our journey culminating in, in, in with the sacred sexual vibration. We didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't. It just it be it just happened, you know. And it was it was extraordinary. So with that came a lot of downloads, a lot of transmissions, a lot a lot of uh, um, I guess you would say visitation. But to your point, the interesting thing was, and this is just a micro example of what you're describing, the next day, two, two ladies reached out to her and said, something happened to me last night. Now they, they did it by appearances on their own. They described going through the same thing, the same physical reactions, Kundalini, soulgasms, I mean, just the whole situation, the surrendering to bring it in, but they went through the same thing on an individual level where we went through it together. And some other things have followed that since then, including just the last couple of days. Uh, so I get what you're saying. Uh, and it's, uh, it's like one of us does something, then everyone else starts to pick it up. You know, uh, it's yeah. available. And, and uh, yeah, it's, so it's, it's, it's really interesting. The other thing people have been talking about, and of course people have been talking about this for a long time, you know, is there, is there two Earths? Is there going to be three Earths? Is there going to be five Earths? But what I've been hearing lately, and this goes to a nine-year-old child that uh, uh, visualized it, and the, and the mother put up uh, the post and, and some drawings. Uh, she came on the show. Then a few other people have talked about it. We talked to somebody very credible yesterday about it, that the Earth splits. Uh, what does that look like, you know? Uh, I think this is something we've all been getting to and trying to like balance in our head. What does that actually look like? Are we, is, are some of us actually going to leave? That doesn't make any sense. Like Morgan was saying this morning that we would do all this work and leave them all behind. Did they choose to be, to, do they choose to stay there without, you know, the others being there? Do you have any idea what that might look like? So that is all a downloaded, um, memory, downloaded information, part of a monadic structure or a monad, as you were talking about, mm -hmm. interpreted 
as best as possible through the third dimensional linear brain, which is an interface for the third dimension and yeah. somewhat the fourth at the moment. Yeah. So it's all metaphor. We, we, there are not in, a, in our physical universe, in this one physical universe that we know, there is um, one structure that we may know as a planet or, or, or some sphere that we live upon. <laughs> it's, it's experienced in different ways by different people, but let's yeah. just call it a, a global planet. There is one of these, but we are looking at a multidimensional reality, which is a multiverse, uh, multi-universe quantum stream. And, and we are looking at um, multiple dimensions at the same time. So there are many, many metaphors to explain what's happening and everything within these downloads, looking at the planet Earth is also a representative and a metaphor for our own DNA structure as well. We are the planet, you know, on that level, we are unified with the planetary uh, structure. Our uh, DNA activation is very linked in with different um, energy presentations uh, in, in harmonic universes with different um, expressions of the planet Earth. So yeah. one person may see um, uh, the Earth splitting into two. Yeah. Um, and that is a metaphor for many things. And it is a genuine, truthful, accurate yeah. download. Yes. But it doesn't mean that it's literally going to happen. And it doesn't mean that some people are literally going to be on one earth and other people are literally on another earth. However, the experience that they live may well be that. And they may never come into contact with the people that are not on that planet. Um, if you want to look at the reality uh, from a higher dimensional point of view, there are there are multiple earths. It's not yeah. just two. So there is a bifurcation, a trifurcation uh, of Earths, a multiplication of Earths. And this is relatively new information that I've downloaded, um, you know, relatively recently. So it's not something I have fully processed myself. You know, we are getting huge, huge different conceptual, visual um, presentations being downloaded and we have to find ways of explaining them. So there is a multiplication and there are, there are many Earths. There is, there is another model where there are two and not another model where there are three. And really it's, it's about trying to work out what these mean, work yeah. out what do these metaphors mean? When it comes to a bifurcation of the Earth, we are looking at a third dimensional Earth, which is the one we are experiencing around us. Then there is a fourth dimensional or fourth density earth, which is um, from one model, that would be uh, the fifth dimensional new earth that everyone is talking about. So from one model, the fourth density earth and the fifth dimensional earth is the same earth. Right. And that, that will be the one that the majority of star seeds are experiencing and living within. Yeah. That earth is, is superimposed upon the third dimensional earth. It's geologically becoming a fourth density structure in places. Only certain individuals are able to see this and it is more of a feeling yeah. rather than a seeing, although sometimes it can be seen because the whole energetic structure of that third dimensional earth is changing. So you've got let's say two people, let's just simplify it. And you've got say, Bill and Ben, let's say. And <laughs> Bill is third dimensional and has not activated his DNA and has not moved through an ascension process and Ben has. And Bill and Ben can be walking together down the street, stood on the same earth. Yeah. Bill is existing within the third dimensional geological earth. His DNA expression and activation has not allowed him to be able to merge or um, lock in with this, this out of phase reality. His DNA isn't activated enough for him to be able to, to do this. And on a metaphorical yeah. level, we could say he hasn't been given a golden ticket. The golden yeah. ticket is an invitation to the new earth. He doesn't have one yet. He yeah. can have one because they're there for everybody. They're, in, they're an infinite amount of golden tickets. And then just let's, take Ben. Now his DNA structure is 
at a level where he is able to perceive and experience higher dimensional realities, including the geological earth he is living upon within the laws of physics within his universe. So he's able to see or predominantly feel a fourth density or fifth dimensional planetary earth. So when they both look at the sun, Bill is seeing a nice bright yellow sun and Ben will see um, movement within the sun. Ben will see a different color around the sun. Ben, ben may see uh, and, and have inner visions of um, beings within the sun and a plasma reality and the fact that the sun's an emanation and that there's another sun behind it. Ben may actually see um, through a telescope um, ships whereas Bill wouldn't see the ships necessarily, although if Bill did see the ships, then his DNA would start to activate. Because, yeah. because Bill and Ben are stood next to one another and are walking down the street together, Bill can activate Ben just by being with him. Right. So then he will be able to activate his DNA and start to see this other reality that is becoming geological. And it, it is difficult to explain. No, no, that's, I think that's a great explanation. That's some great examples. The, the looking at the sun, for one thing. Yeah. Uh, it's I, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I can think before and after, and I, I did it a couple of days ago. I looked at the sun, which, first of all, you know, the human part of me said, how am I able to do this right now? I mean, it was no clouds. It was very bright. <clears throat> really, really that shining white brightness where you, you, you can't keep your eyes open. But I was able to do it. And then after a couple of minutes, you know, it turned purple and then some rainbows shot out of it. So I think that's a great example. I think another great point you make is that if Bill and Ben are walking down the street, there's some, uh, for lack of a better word, unconscious merging or activity happening, code exchange yes. occurring. And then this again is, you know, some people have been talking about the circuitry. We've experienced it. I experienced it last night when we were communing. Uh, I wasn't experiencing it in my body. I guess I was like her body. And as she was receiving everything, I could see all the circuitry in her body, all the different, you know, skeletal, the, uh, the blood, you know, vessels, the, the muscles and everything being connected. And everything was 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 like uh, lighting up, like it was like sparking up and then it started to flow more. That's what I kind of see what you're describing in terms of those code exchanges and that type of thing. So some of this uh, and, I, and I think the other thing that you that you said that's really cool is is the fact that. Um, we're, we're, it is all metaphors. It is all metaphors. And, and so we can be walking down the street together and one person's literally seeing one thing and one person's seeing another thing. Yeah. You know? and which I think goes back to also where a lot of people have had problems when they wake up or they get to, to a higher elevation or a new threshold cross and they want to go tell people, you can't tell them. <laughs> you know, it, that, that what you said about it's a feeling, it's like Ben's sensory perceptions are just not at a certain level where the other sensory perceptions human and higher are you know with bill at a higher yeah. level and he's able to sense other things and yeah. bill will only be able to be activated by ben if bill is receptive and that will be due to whether there are blockages within the flow of his field so that that light cannot be activated sparked up if you like and that will be due to um the way ben thinks the way ben lives uh, sorry bill the way bill bill thinks the way bill lives whether bill is repressing trauma or whether he's yeah. dealing with trauma um his actions the, all of those things so people can block themselves from yeah. they can be bombarded with light codes and not yeah. actually be activated because they are not um uh, receptive the yeah. minute there's any growth whatsoever and that can be as simple as do you know what i think i'm going to go get a massage it can be as simple as that and yeah. the minute that massage therapist lays their hands on them and they think wow this is nice that is enough it, yeah. it, it can be something that simple but it's very important in all this to be grounded because we have so many different quantum metaphors coming forward um it's very 
I won't say easy, but there are individuals who can become quite confused with all of the different downloads and the different metaphors and what they relate to. And of course, one individual may have the same metaphoric image as another, and they will both interpret that metaphoric image differently, and neither of them are wrong or right. But right. there are individuals that within this compartmentalization, they don't remain within a unification at the same time. You need to be compartmentalized and individualized and unified at the same time. Some people, and it doesn't mean they're not going to get there eventually, but some people will move into the compartmentalization and see everything as separate, even though they are raising within a spiritual um, belief system. They get lost, if you like, in a fourth dimensional reality and don't yeah. quite make it to that unification of the fifth dimension. And yeah. there are a lot of people within the spiritual community that are kind of there. Yeah. And for the new awakened individuals who are just coming into this, it can be quite confusing for them to meet individuals who are teaching or, or helping them from this compartmentalized viewpoint. Yeah. yeah. However, nothing is a mistake and everything is there as yeah. a teacher in the higher. No, that's a, that's a great explanation too. Let me just kind of go back over that so I can digest it. So I get it. Like the compartmentalization is almost like you're mastering that specialty or you're, you're, you're receiving the code, the full course on that. The individualization is, uh, containing or comprised of different compartmentalizations and then you have the unification which is where you can step into the compartmentalization maintain your individualization and still see the big yeah. picture without yeah. separation see that circuitry exactly but, yeah so yeah. you would have an event horizon to your structure to your compart the compartmentalization remains within an event horizon. It doesn't go outside of that boundary. Yes. And the event horizon is the boundary that can change its structure and then lock in with other individuals who are also compartmentalized and individualized. And you become a grid, a unified yeah. grid. You create the unified field and you become a monad. You're a monad yourself. Yeah. Even though you see these monadic structures outside of you, you become the monad yourself because your DNA is yeah. converting or restructuring itself back to the original formation. Yeah. But if you do not have that event horizon, if you do not have that boundary, and this can be interpreted as literal boundaries within the third dimension, yeah. in your third dimensional reality experience, if you do not have that event horizon around that um, structure that you are, you become compartmentalized and you become many, many, many individuals without the unification. Yeah. And that becomes more akin to... Um, Losing your mind. <laughs> well, I wasn't gonna say that. No, I'm just kidding, I'm making a joke. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's, 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 it's more akin to a disassociation, although it's not because disassociation yeah is more losing your mind that what I'm saying is, I mean, I'm not talking about mental illness. I'm talking no, no, about no. ungrounded yeah. individual within a spiritual awakening. Absolutely. Individual, yeah. but basically you'll meet someone who says to you, I'm Jesus. Yes. I'm Christ. Yeah. And so, oh, okay. Are, are you? Yes. I have memories of being Jesus. I know yeah. that I was Jesus and I'm here to bless you all. And I'm here to help you all. I, you know, and they have memories of being Jesus and yeah. they, they know that they're Jesus. And the thing is, they are correct. Yeah. If they were to put that individualized structure of themselves as, as Jesus inside that monadic unified sphere with the event horizon. Jesus yeah. becomes one aspect of, a, of an infinite structure of aspects and yeah. it's placed in its correct place for, for we are all Jesus and we are yeah. all, all these individuals. But when you don't have that boundary and you don't have that event horizon, you think you're Jesus and that you're the only one who is and yeah. everyone else isn't Jesus. That's the problem. Yeah. So that's another way to say that I think is, is uh, and, and I understand it just like we had attachment to our traumas and our stories of the past and our past life memories. We had to learn to, to, to put that in a proper place. Then you have this stuff coming in and it's powerful. And so it's yeah. perfectly understandable but what, another way to put it, I think, uh, I think this is what you're saying is it's like the attachment to it. It's like the attachment to it. Like this is the end all cure all. When in fact, yeah. 
let's just say Jesus is one of the 12 components of the core monad, then he goes here and St. Germain goes here and Kuan yes. Yin's here. And, you know, so it's kind of like that. Yeah, exactly. that's, a, that's a really good. And you brought up something else, too, that I think is important uh, to restate in terms of merging. Uh, Morgan and I were talking about last night because she's been doing it for years and years and years. And I said, you know, I think there's almost like two things happening here recently with, the, with our interactions with, with certain people. And that is, it's that the merging is because it, 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 it's like, it's good to be conscious, but it's happening anyway. Like, like say a star seed is walking up to a star seed, you know, well, by the time they, come together all this stuff has already happened because of their frequency like tuning forks right yes but then she said because because i said well and then maybe what we're all doing is preparing for the majority that's going to need to go back to the elementary to the basics but that at this other field of uh this other field in the realm where the starseed starseed realm let's say uh there it's more it's more natural it's just happening vibrationally it's just happening but one of the things she said, which is what I wanted to restate what you said, was that you can have all the light code you want coming at you, but if you're blocked in that, especially the heart, you're not going to get it. But if you are open to it, even if you're blocked, if you're open to it, open yeah. to that growth and expansion, then like you said, it could be something as simple as a Reiki, a Reiki treatment as soon as the masseuse puts their hands on you. Or so drinking that, a green smoothie. Yeah. And and yeah. I think that I think that's important, not just for people who uh, because there's levels to everything. Yes. And you just described it perfectly uh, with these uh, the 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 uh, situation with the event horizon, the attachment to I'm um, Jesus or whatever the case is. That's some type of some type of blockage, whatever however that that works. But that openness that openness is a requirement for growth. It only makes sense. You've got to stay open to everything. And and you know, like she always says, why would you want to limit yourself? I mean, the last thing we're, we're, the, what we are doing is liberating ourselves from limitation. So, uh, but I guess it's, it's a lot on the human psyche. Uh, and maybe that's just part of the process. Like you said, everything's perfect. Yeah. Yes. Because if you meet someone who is like that and has got that sort of ungrounded distortion and perhaps you're just learning and that person is, is teaching you something and yeah. then you go away and find out that that teaching is perhaps um, distorted and incorrect. Yeah. That in itself from a higher viewpoint wouldn't be a mistake no. because how can you see that which is whole and genuine and integrated if you haven't seen that which is not? Yeah. So everyone is, is playing their roles from a, a, higher, a higher viewpoint. And that is another, another thing to be aware of regarding this monad the monadic structure it is a a structure of dimensional layers and yeah. different dimensions have different perspectives if you like you could say that there is a being that that um controls or rules or lives within each dimension if you want to use that metaphor and you can communicate with that being that can be a representative of the different um aspects within that 12 that you're talking about within the dna but each perspective is different and they can be contradictory from the third dimensional viewpoint. Yeah. That is the paradoxical consciousness the nine keep talking about. When you find that there is one viewpoint, one perspective uh, that you hold and that you can actually assimilate into your paradigm. And then there's another one that is completely opposing and you can assimilate that one as well. And you can hold these opposing viewpoints within your paradigm. That is paradoxical consciousness. Yeah. And if there are two viewpoints predominantly within your paradigm, the nine call that bilocational consciousness, which is the first step to what we are moving into when it comes to bilocation. We are moving into having and holding and experiencing that ability we know as bilocation. That doesn't literally mean that we are going to be in two places at the same time and that I might have my physical body at home and my physical body down at the supermarket. It may well come to that eventually when the geological planet supports that, um, yeah. that expression. But, yeah. but it starts off as a consciousness, an yeah. awareness of, two, of being in two places, the third dimensional earth and the fifth dimensional earth, yeah. or however you want to put it. Yeah. And then there is a trilocational consciousness, which is holding three 
potentially opposing and very different paradigms and embracing them all within your paradigm. And that's the Trinity, that is the Holy Trinity. And then there is um, multi-locational consciousness, which is a multi-paradigm. And that is part of the unified consciousness. As we compartmentalize within this infinite structure and hold that individualization and have that event horizon, and we become aware of what we are, and then we make the connections with those that are like us, because there are quantum parallel selves that literally are us. And then there are others that are existing upon the third dimensional reality, the same time as us that are definitely us as well, but are presented as different expressions. And you will experience it that most closely with your soulmate twin flame partner. Yeah. Yeah. As, we, as we do that, as we understand that structure, that is when we, as I've said, come into this awareness, this indigo revolution, this indigo awareness and analysis of understanding what that compartmentalization is. And that is when we start to literally uh, feel and hold these multi-locational paradigms. Yeah. And that can be experienced in a myriad of ways. We may have a dream where we're in 12 or 20 or five or however many it may be different places at once yeah. we may come back from a dream and realize that we've been in a hundred places at once the nine recently brought forward a um, um a new way of interpreting this because it is very much this quantum field and and it's it's very triggered around this solstice time yeah. they, they brought forward this um information about the crystal heart solstice gateway where you can use a literal crystal um, in the shape of a heart or you can visualize a crystal and look through that crystal or have an actual crystal next to you as you do the exercise and you actually see one planetary system however you wish to view that earth whether it's round flat squashed you know whatever you want to view your earth as that's entirely your prerogative to hold right. that paradigm we cannot judge someone else's paradigm as being ridiculous and uh you know everyone has a viewpoint and within that there is a reality that molds itself to your perspective so we can look at that global um presentation of earth and instead of seeing two earths or three earths as a, as one very good metaphoric uh, presentation they brought forward a new one which is to see these crystal shards of light which are representatives of different um alternate realities or quantum fields and then actually focus in on one and take that one and then analyze it it's very similar to what you were saying about the monad and there's a 12 yeah. and when you go into one and you look, then there's 12 more. Yeah. And then you're seeing all of this circuitry, yeah? Well, this is the same thing, but using more of a crystalline vibration for the crystal individuals, because it, you can't really say that some people are crystal individuals and some people are, are indigo individuals. That is a third dimensional interpretation. And it's true. The majority of people do display an indigo personality, like me, I have an indigo personality, or a crystalline personality, a crystal personality, where they'd be more soft and healing and not so talkative and like me, they'd be different. <laughs> but really we are a blend of all of these. Yeah. And so the crystal aspect is the, the aspect that wants to be. You were saying about this, is it's already happening. It's happening yeah. naturally, that's the crystal yeah. aspect. Yeah. So, but the crystal individuals who do hold a predominant crystal personality, find it quite difficult to work on the indigo analysis. They yeah. want something more visual and more yeah. heart opening. They're yeah. very centered in the heart. That's the brain for them. The indigo are here in the, in the pineal gland. Yes, they've got a very open heart too, but they love being up here in the, in the analysis and in the focus and in the pineal gland and in the sight. So this visualization, the nine brought forward is very much for the crystal aspect of you and the crystal individuals to see these shards of crystalline light as quantum reflections. There's, there's an infinite number of them, but you will see the ones that are right for you. And then you zoom in on those and then 
start to analyze them. And what they are, are crystal shards that will contain several monads within them. Wow. So they are, um, if you like, a sort of a, a, a tube presentation of a monad. A monad I would perceive as being very geometric, much like a snowflake and quite round. But these would be more tubular expressions and it's just simply a vertical or horizontal or circular geometry. Yeah. Um, so this is just a new uh, way of viewing these different compartmentalized aspects of the externalized presentation of self that we are all going through right now in our own unique way. And a huge amount of people are experiencing this right yeah. now. Yeah. And many people might hear me talk and think, well, what is she talking about? I don't understand a word she's saying. And yet deep inside, yeah. they will be feeling, actually, I'm kind of resonating with this. And I, and I do understand on some level, even though I don't understand up here, you don't need to understand up here. A lot of the time, I don't understand up here when I'm speaking. It's coming from that monadic that nine presentation. And I often process things after I've said them or, or simultaneously to saying them. Often the information comes before you've processed it. So yeah. don't worry if you don't understand what is being said here. Yeah, if it's come in, it's gonna to come to you. Now, and uh, I love what you said about the, uh, you know, the consciousness is created first. I guess you could, another word would be like thought. So yes. like the, bi the bilocation thing, so, so you know, there, you know, and a lot of us have experienced that it would only make sense as the as the frequency is raising uh, that it would start to materialize because that's what this whole trip's about. I mean, it's all been it's all about physical matter uh, made in the image or as above, below, however you want to put it. Another thing I wanted to ask you about, uh, see what your pers perspective was, was on sovereignty. Sovereignty expanded, though. Because uh, as you were talking about earlier, you know, just as we had to detach, so to speak, and put the past and the traumas and the stories in their proper place to do the same with the, the higher dimensional connections and, and uh, apparitions and, and that type of thing. Uh, sovereignty. What role? There's a lot of surrender when it comes to being this divine human in this transition. Where does sovereignty stop and start? Do we, is it in our best interest? It is our natural nature uh, to remain in our uh, dominion, in our full sovereignty, regardless of what's being shown to us, whether it be the darkest hell or the highest light. Is, and I'm talking about even like in your case, like speaking to the nine, or in my case, speaking to my guides or, or a galactic brother, or whatever the case is. Is there there's something going on with sovereignty, at least in my mind, that that kind of like uh, it's like a, a thin a thin ice with uh, free will, universal will, uh, yeah. alignment. Uh, I mean, does that does that are you getting what I'm saying in terms of the sovereignty and and yes. where is its place? Where does it stop and start? Especially with the information coming in, and if yes. we all get these directives, like you need to go take your clothes off and run outside in the pasture and howl at the moon, you know, or whatever the case is. I'm just being extreme, but, but we get that stuff and we follow it. And sometimes we have that little discussion, like, well, I don't want to do that, you know, or, or go away for now. I'm trying to do something else. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Well, somebody runs outside naked, howling at the moon in a busy built up area. That <laughs> was grounded people I was talking about. <laughs> If you've, got a, if you've got a great big field and there's no one around, then yeah. yeah. That's, that's the one I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm grounded, so that's the one I go to. <laughs> so you said, um, is, is it in our best interests to remain within that sovereignty? And it's absolutely in our best interest, but that doesn't mean we're going to do it 24-7. Yeah. Sovereignty is exactly the same thing that we've been talking about since we started talking. So the sovereign being is the infinite structure within that event horizon right the event horizon is the boundary to one's sovereignty one must have boundaries to be sovereign like a country yeah that's why you know borders and walls and you know trump wanting to build walls and um 
us here in the UK, there's the whole Brexit thing going on. It's, it, we, are, we are matching within the third dimension what's happening within the higher dimensional state, which is a return to our original DNA structure, our original human self that we yeah. had taken from us or that we chose to let go of or, or whichever way you want to look at it. Yeah. So sovereignty, being the sovereign being, you are an integral, unified structure. Yeah. And the event horizon is your boundary. And when you remain within that, and it can be called zero point, it can be called being inside a vortex, you know, whatever you want to, whatever words you want to use, that is your sovereignty. And when you are activated at least to around, again, this is a metaphor, the fifth DNA strand, which again is metaphoric and that's a whole other subject. When you are, well, let's just say you're a fifth dimensional um, thinking individual. Okay. When you are at that level, you will be a sovereign individual or certainly have the ability to move into sovereignty, which is very akin to integrity. Mm. Integrity, truth, honesty is all part of sovereignty. Yeah. This is taking the pillar of light. So if you imagine that there's this vertical pillar running through you, you would be in the center of that pillar of light. That's also Excalibur. You are knighted. You yeah. are knighted by Excalibur. The Lady of the Lake raises her hand and gives you, the seeker, Arthur, the king, Excalibur, and you take the sword. It's all the same thing. That's your sovereignty. Same with the Knights of the Round Table, and they all put their swords in, and there are 12 of them. And these are the yes. 12 structures of the DNA. That is the circuitry. That is the monad. All of the metaphors that we've had since ancient times, all coming back to the fore for us to analyze. So th that sovereignty is your integral self that is a understanding of the infinite compartmentalization yeah. that you, you are all things. Therefore, you are learning about what these things all are. But that doesn't mean you sit there and think, right, OK, so that means I'm God, I'm Jesus, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a wardrobe, because Ooh. that will take you. A multiple amount of lifetimes in a linear sense to understand it you cannot understand it from the third dimensional perspective because it's linear time there's not enough linear time for right. you to compartmental this is a unified compartmentalization that you take at once and yeah. that is what the nine are calling um the multi-locational consciousness or the omnipresence yeah. the omnipresent consciousness which is an infinite consciousness it is taking the monad which is all and everything yeah. and within that all and everything it's not just about all and everything as in truth or idea it's all and everything as in who you are you are all things and you place those things as as a a feeling and that feeling will give you a visual and that visual is your monad or your event horizon yeah. or your your crystalline snowflake or whatever you your geometry your circuitry that's how you take this structure and then you can hold it as a, uni a unified field as a unity structure and you know with every fiber of your being that you are sovereign and yeah. that you are unified and that you are fully compartmentalized and unless you can take that knowing you are lost outside of this fifth dimensional reality. You are sort of lost within a fourth dimensional reality and ungrounded. The grounding is the boundaries. This all comes down, if you want to look at the chakras, to the solar plexus. This mm. is the power center and the open heart, of course, and you need all of the chakras because that's the Excalibur pillar of light. But if you are having trouble understanding how to move into this grounded, um, uh, these boundaries and, and find that event horizon within your infinite structure. If you're having trouble with this, you can do things like martial arts, Tai mm. Chi, you can do yoga, you can do something that's, that brings you into the center of the solar plexus, or you can use your life experience as well. So somebody rings you up on a Monday morning. Can you help me? I need to move house and, and my, my house removal person has let me down. Can you help me? 
But the thing is, you've already decided in your mind that you want to take Monday morning off and just sit down quietly by your garden pond and meditate. That is just as important. Then you make the decision, do I let go of my meditation quiet space and go and help my friend to move house, which will exhaust me, but she's done a lot for me? Or do I then uh, say no to my friend and go and carry on with my meditation plans? The thing is, there's no right or wrong answer there. Right. Right. completely your choice that's where the free will comes in the point is do it within integrity and sovereignty so the decision is actually i'm not going to meditate today yes i'm going to help you i'll be there in an hour and you do it willingly but if it's more like oh okay yeah. yes i'll yeah. be there and the whole time you're thinking i really don't want to do this i can't believe that i've got to be here helping this person move i wanted to be sat by my pond meditating I'm so annoyed and frustrated and I'm distracted. I shouldn't be here helping this person move. You have lost your sovereignty then. But that is not a judgment because we all do it. Yeah. I do it. I have done it recently. I have come out of my sovereignty and been exactly there yeah. and done something that I didn't want to do. And I'm moaning to myself inside, wishing I was somewhere else. I do it and yet I have the nine and I have the understanding of sovereignty and I know what the event horizon is. <laughs> I understand my compartmentalization <laughs> and I still do it. So don't beat yourself up when you do. It's just placing all of this and thinking, okay, on that particular day, I wasn't really in my center and I wasn't really in the full integrity. I'm not going to blame myself. I'm learning, I'm a human. I haven't got my 12 strand structure back yet. I'm on that path. And you go back to the zone and you go back to the teaching yeah. and you do whatever it takes to get there. If it means meditation or yoga or eating healthily or going to listen to some amazing music or go and listen to some inspiring spiritual teacher that you love. Just whatever it takes to come back to that sovereignty, to come back to that feeling and find that compartmentalization, ground yourself again. That's what it's, it's about. It's, it's such a journey of multidimensionality yeah. and it does involve a third dimensional reality as well. One yeah. cannot leave that behind. You know, you, just, you can't sit by your pond and float off yeah. into the higher light 24 seven. Or that mean, then you're not here. Yeah. You have to do the, the stuff here too. And it's, it's, it's not easy. And then on another level, it is. Defeats, yeah, it would defeat the purpose. We're human for a reason. <laughs> so, yeah, and I had something like that happen to me. Uh, it was in April, no, May. I wanted to launch this damn website, you know? I mean, it's been two years. It's been just like, and uh, the other three, uh, the kind of involved Morgan and two others uh, said, no, they said, we're not even close to being ready. And I'm like, BS, we're doing it. You know, I'm tired, I mean, we gotta do it. I mean, I'm... and so then I said, okay, all right. And, and it really hurt. And for two, three, four, five weeks, it wasn't, uh, I was, I was, in, I would have to say I was in integrity, but I was, but it wasn't like instantaneous. It was like a process. So I had to go back. Why, why did I do this? Uh, what is, and, and what it all came out to, and it's just an example, was it was moving from the patriarchal, you know, the straight lines, and the organization and the control to yeah. the flow of the feminine, you yeah. know, being, that was the kind of what, what I got out of it. So I started yeah. to, I started, that was my meditative way to do it was to started to embrace that. And, uh, but it took me, it took me a while. So I totally get what you're saying. Uh, yeah. Either choice is a good choice. And even if you make the choice where you have that, second guessing and which is really kind of like resentment and projection or whatever you can it's still going to end up in the same place you're just going to take a different route you know so that's a very good point i like the way you're putting this stuff into the human experience because well, i think it has to be really because everything you're saying i relate to and this kind of happened to me in a very different way around about may as well same sort of time because the starseed individuals are so unified in their journey you don't just have one or two people going through something yeah, yeah. there's a whole group and 
people who have been through this and who are going through this will have found their way to our chat and they will be listening to us right now saying hey that happened to me in may as well or whatever. so you have to bring it into the human experience because otherwise you have to do you have to kind of go both people need the activation and they can only get that through a a chargeable activated um plasma fire idea or or piece of knowledge because as they hear that information it holds a resonance yes. it holds an activated charge that is um in alignment and what that means is it is um it, it has a life of its own it's a living yes. thing it is a monad people yes. need that activation so that they can actually find that within themselves and that assists them with expansion and it assists them in, in in decoding their own metaphor yeah. but there's no point in just staying there you have to bring that down to the everyday because we're living in a third dimensional reality and people have houses and yeah. money yeah. and bills and families yeah. and <laughs> all of the all of the of the life stuff so yeah. everyone needs the 3d tutorials as well yeah absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. and i love what you said too that that's a consciousness you know which is kind of how Sology presented itself to us last summer as a consciousness separate. So it was yeah. like a micro macro example, but like even things like that, like recently there's been over the last two, three days, uh, the dialogue began uh, in regard to something's going on with the financial system. Something's going on with money right now. Talk to another person. I said, Hey, you know, there's kind of like a, a, a what would you call it? Uh, just a, a period of suspended animation almost. And you can see that it's collective. And then another person said, you know what? I'm doing an event. I usually have 60 people. We've only got 12. Uh, you know, another person said, you know, my books stop selling. So there's like something going on. That's a consciousness, right? mm -hmm. like you're saying. And it's like, we're, we're tapping into it. It, it, like to a new way, um, you know, new neural pathways, new, yeah. new, uh, uh, yeah, new path, new way. Uh, so yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting what you said about because because that information, like like the circuitry, it's like it, it is moving faster and faster among those who are alike. I guess is, is to put it another way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, and it's 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 not easy for individuals to to sort of get this all at once. Yeah. You know, they have to. Um, work this out in their own way and look at their own life and look at look at the metaphors that are coming through themselves and um and find that sovereignty and find that balance and it's 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 not easy and it can be very challenging but it's also incredibly enjoyable as well and very very blissful at the same time it, it's almost like many people will say that they're at the most challenging time of their lives with this because the mind is being expanded to such a point that they never did believe that they could uh think this way yeah. and yet it's the most wonderful time of their lives at the yeah. same time because all this magic is happening and they're they're having they're having more of a of a of a connection with people than they've ever ever had before yeah. Yeah. But it will depend on where that person is and what they're manifesting for themselves. There are people that are spiritually aware that are cut off from others. And the only way that they can make that connection is through interviews and shows like this. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing, too, you're bringing up, too, which is which uh, I'm seeing. It's a very acute awareness of polarities. So Morgan uh, picked up about 10 days ago, doubt and delusion. Like we were because we were having what you're describing. We're having like this powerful clarity coming in and coming in rapidly and then like you said you go back to like you said at the top of the show you go back to being a human in the in the 3d stuff you're like where did you guys go you know what's happening now <laughs> so you sit there and marinate in it so it's but it, so it's weird because we've all had that doubt and am i delusional through our path you know especially when we first woke up like i'm crazy or they say i'm crazy maybe i am crazy and, and then you had the, the, you know, the bombs come in, the love bombs, the wisdom bomb. And now it's like really acute to me. It's like they're fine lines. So the, the, the delusional questions or the doubts, 
they're not like severe, but they're there. And you're like looking at it going, what's going on with this while you're having these other, you know, uh, divine episodes, divine intervention, whatever happened at the same time at a higher level. So it's really, it's really kind of strange. It's like taking the polarity game to a higher and higher, wider expanse, pinpoints versus big blobs on the, on the, you know, on the graph. And, and then that zero point actually almost like it's getting bigger, you know, like yeah. it's getting bigger. Yeah. And that's exactly, exactly what is happening polarity is expanding and raising and we are experiencing that that's exactly what is happening you know globally polarity is changing and we have to integrate that polarity within ourselves you were talking about the the heros gamos that you were going through mm -hmm. and that's all part of that same same thing that that polarity we we can't move into that sovereign structure and take that um integral uh infinite structure with the event horizon without understanding the polarity yeah uh, and yet it's a unified non-polarized structure yeah. but if you want to look at it as a circle you would perhaps see it as a yin yang a complete yeah. balance a merge yeah. blend but the polarity and and that's where this whole third dimensional reality is coming in and um, sometimes we can feel like we're pulled completely from our path i mean you were you were saying earlier about wanting to do your website and from one point of view you're being held back you're being you're being prevented from going forward other people have got different thoughts to you so there's a polarization from another perspective which is just as valid it's all about divine timing yeah. and the website is structure in its in its own right and isn't ready to be born yet but it's yeah. like you take both of these structures i've had the same thing with my next book um, you know, I, I've had plans, right, I'm going to get back to my book because I've, I've written a lot of it already, channeled a lot of information, but that's been sort of stored away in my computer archives sort of from the end of last year. And every month I'm like, right, I'll get back to it. And then something happens and I, I can't because I have to go into a almost continuous monadic uh, place night and day yeah. to be able to bring forward this high level information that comes through me. And if there's any 3D distractions going on, even if they're nice distractions, like a wedding or something, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. it, it's not easy to get I bet there was polarities with that. <laughs> yeah, we haven't just had one. I mean, it's been yeah. nonstop. We, we were oh, married yeah. in March. My son got married in May. My sister was married um, on Sunday. <laughs> my married at the end of July and my other son gets married at the end of August so and it's beautiful and it's lovely but there's 3D stuff to think about uh, when yeah. you are planning events for example yeah. or attending events and when you are in a, a flow of uh, opening up that light field within and moving into that integrity and drawing down that monadic information or communicating with the nine however you want to put it it is a very different way of living yeah. and yeah. It's interesting how people who are sort of predominantly in the third dimensional existence view you when you when you move away from the the sort of the done thing, the, the brainwashed. Um, this is how we live. Yeah. People worry about you and think, oh, you haven't been out for a whole week. And like, <laughs> why don't you ever travel? And why don't you want to come out to this party or? Um, I mean, I heard something the other day. I mean, I just couldn't believe how, and it's supposed to be an inspirational quote. I actually heard something the other day. Somebody said, um, a job is just a job. Don't let it define you. At the end of the day, forget about your work. You work to live. Go out and live your life. Don't worry about your job. That's how people think. Your mm. job is something you do from nine to five. You hate mm -hmm. it, but, you know, it's the way to make a living. Just knuckle under, grit your teeth, do your job, clock out at five o'clock, and then reap the benefits of your hard slog. I mean, yeah. what kind of inspirational <laughs> teaching is this? And I replied, this was online, and I said, what happens when your job and your life's mission and the knowing of why you were incarnated here what happens when your job and your life's mission become one and the same which is yeah. going to happen to every yeah. star seed and that's yeah. why we've got a money issue right now because with the unified structure as we move into this compartmentalization within self and we become this knowing unified structure this 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 structure that we have analyzed and have understood we're moving into 
abundance because we are in unification and pure sovereignty and that is an abundant flow so yeah. the money systems on this planet must change yeah. to accommodate not just the unified structure and the flow but the, the way the systems will work yeah. because the starseed consciousness is the majority consciousness and yeah. that is not a consciousness that believes you yeah. clock in at nine and you clock out at five yeah. and then you have your holiday twice a year and go drinking on a friday night that is not the consciousness that the starseeds right. hold it is a unified structure meaning all day long and all night long is your job and your mission you are unified with your entire life everything you do is all part of soul evolution and yeah. unification it is a spiritual journey that has to come into our reality so the money systems must change because yeah. the whole structure on this planet regarding jobs and work and wages and how we, we we access our money that has to change and it will look like it's falling apart when it changes which yeah. it kind of does look yes. like that now yeah that's what i've been picking up on it and you you verbalized it which i hadn't but that and that basically is that that starseed consciousness is is in command and yes. and so it's it's even i, I don't want to say that we don't have to take 3d steps or actions but that consciousness the way i'm seeing it is putting immense pressure almost like the final straw that breaks the camel's back immense exactly. pressure and that's just one example but immense pressure on the false financial system you know or the exactly. matrix financial system but it's so difficult for the starseed who is aware and in that integral structure and taking their sovereignty and finding that individualization, taking that spiritual journey. And then they go out and they are faced with the old energy because yeah. it's still there on a physical yeah. level. Yeah. The time hasn't caught up. We're all living eons in the future, if you like. The starseeds yeah. are living way in the future. They're yeah. in the fifth dimension. They're on another planet. And yeah. that they're existing physically in 2019 on yeah. this planet. And then you'll come across the old energy. And that is still the system, the governmental system, the bureaucracy, the, the mind control, the, the, the structures and, and the paradigms that people have. And the starseeds are going to be faced with this everywhere they go because there aren't that many starseeds on a on a on a number level you know when it yeah. comes to the amount of individuals yeah. when compared to the seven billion on the planet the energetic of the starseeds is much yeah. larger yeah the, yeah. the energetic of the starseeds is controlling or or is leading or merging yeah. with the planetary system it, yeah. it is it is the predominant vibration it is the positively polarized vibration but those starseeds are coming across this old energy all the time yeah. And um, they have to find ways to deal with this and navigate this old energy and remain within the new energy themselves. Yeah. And that is why one becomes sovereign and finds the event horizon and compartmentalizes oneself in an infinite structure within it, because one can call this a bubble, if you like, yeah. your own personal bubble. That would be yeah. a good way to, to put it. You remain within your bubble when dealing with the, this old energy so you're yeah. still in the fifth dimension yeah you are still in the future yeah however it's not easy to do and it's a new thing yes that's been yeah. done we're doing this for the first time that's within right. this time period within this known history and each time we learn to do this each time we discover the oh i i stayed in my bubble that time when i was dealing with that really irate person uh, who was suffering from road rage or whatever it may be i stayed in my bubble that piece of learning becomes a memory field yeah it's a living it becomes a monad it becomes yeah. a section of a monad it becomes a memory field and it stays there all the star seeds who are open and in flow then have access to it yeah so it only takes one person to learn something and that reverberates through the star seed network and yeah coming down so if if you like you could say that these downloads these monads these these light codes and structures that are coming in from the center of the galaxy are put there by us I through agree. our memories and our learning yeah. it's a continuous spiral and there is no beginning and no end and you asked me earlier where does sovereignty begin and where does it end 
it's infinite. There is no yeah. beginning and there is no end to sovereignty. It is a circle. It is actually a spiral. And that's what we are. It's a never ending spiral. And that's the DNA. Yeah. So yeah. everything is um, within the star seeds consciousness right now, where they all are. And specifically, this is firing up around the time of the solstice, where they all are is balancing the different dimensional perspectives within themselves the different compartmentalized aspects within themselves that's it's a balancing act it is a balancing act through um integration it's an yeah. integrative balancing act that's where they are right now but they're doing really really well yeah. evidence might not suggest that on the third dimension because it isn't tangible and can't be seen unless you log onto youtube and find chats like ours but <laughs> it is <laughs> And the star seats are doing really, really well, really, really well. Yeah, I know this is kind of a, uh, but I don't want to get away from it. Uh, kind of a trivial question. No, be a really, trivial really short question. answer. Well, I mean, th this thing that, that people talking about the event. Yes. You know, the, the blink, the, the the universe blinks at or winks at us, and everything. Uh, and again, like you said, everything's a metaphor. But yes. uh, it, it just strikes me uh, the literal, yeah. the literalness that uh, is being projected in some of the community, you know, and I'm not judging anybody. I'm just kind of going, can we just yeah. stop talking about this? Uh, we had a kid on yesterday, a 13 year old kid, beautiful kid. Uh, and he said, I don't know if it's already happened. I don't know if it's going to happen or I don't know if it's happening now. Well, all three of those. Right, right. <laughs> the thing is, each each individual is at a different level of expansion and, and having to integrate. Some people are still linearly thinking, even though they are spiritually aware and they have a lot of knowledge and they may well be in contact with non-physical entities and higher dimensional structures but they're interpreting everything in a linear sense. So everything's on a one tracked mono, they're having to sort of sequence everything. And then you've got people in bilocational consciousness, trilocational, multilocational, and moving in and out of all of these. So mm. everyone is going to have a different interpretation. The event, it's the same thing as the rapture in the Bible, it's identical. So the yeah. event and rapture are one and the same thing. Yeah. Um, just to put that out there. <laughs> um, this is from a higher dimensional viewpoint when looking down upon the third dimension. Yeah. This is a flash of light in one moment. And that one flash of light uh, coming from the, the solar system or the galactic core spills all over the planet and into everyone's DNA and changes everyone instantaneously. That is the, the, the correct viewpoint from a higher dimensional perspective that is out of linear time yeah. interpreting that that event that situation within within the third dimension how it looks to them from the higher dimensions so if you've got a channel or, or an intuitive and they're picking up this metaphor yeah. it's correct it's right yes that's how it is yes however when you are down here in the third dimension and you are experiencing the third dimension it's very different because it, you are looking upwards then and you are not going to see a reality where there's a big flash of light and your DNA gets woken up and all of a sudden everything's completely different. You're transported into a, a new dimension instant, instantly and it's one big event that we've been waiting for. That isn't how it's experienced within the third dimension. Right. The event is, as I said, the same thing as the rapture and that yeah. is a flash of light. Yes. That is an increasing of light, photonic light, plasma, it's plasmic light within the DNA. Now, it's instantaneous from the higher viewpoint, but from our experience in a linear reality, it's a linear experience and it takes place over time. Yeah, yeah. So it is not something that's going to happen on one big day. Yeah. If one is to give the event or the rapture a date, one would look at the um, the predominant consciousness when it comes to the counting system. The yep. predominant consciousness 
when you're looking at Atlantean codes as well coming in, um, sent from the past at Atlantean times into now, one would then be looking at the calendar system that is the Mayan calendar. That would be the timing that would tell us when the event is most likely to take place. And that was the 21st of December, 2012. Right. That was the moment for the event. And that flash of light took place from the higher viewpoint. However, that 2012 point is a, is a never expanding um, time, right. opening up into several sections of time, several years. The 21st of December, 2012, it's interesting we're talking about it. It was a zero point field portal. Whenever there is a energy spike, um, as in the raising of frequency on this planet and within the starseed individuals that matches the level of the 21st of December um, winter solstice energy, when the, the energy spike outside of that time, moving forward in time, matches that, you yeah. move back into the same space. So basically that's happening now with the summer solstice on the 21st or the winter solstice, depending where you are in the world. The 21st of June is that point. And that portal, when it opens on the 21st of June, 2019, it connects in like a tunnel, like a wormhole. You have wormholes that move from one section of time to another section of time. That's why it's called a stargate. So the 21st of December, 2012, the event is occurring within any energy spike that matches the frequency of the 21st of December 2012. And the only reason why the 21st of December 2012 was such a high energy spike is because of the collective consciousness within the Starseed community holding the memories of the um, Atlantean uh, yeah. measuring system, which fell into the Mayan calendar teachings. That's why it ended up falling on the 21st of December 2012. Mm, I got you. Great explanation. Really good explanation. Now, uh, let me just ask you this last thing. Uh, so with the solstice coming up, I mean, obviously everybody can feel it. <laughs> this is ramping up. I saw a post yesterday that the Schumann was at 92. And another one showing, I think, I want to say the last four or five days, there was three incredible, unexplained that's spikes. That's your spike. That's yeah, your yeah, spike. That's the spikes, yeah. yeah. And... Uh, but what uh, what would your advice be for uh, for any of us in terms of preparation, readiness? I don't know. That's not the right word to experience uh, the solstice. Uh, is there any is there is there anything we might want to do to align with it? Uh, take advantage of it in the in the in the right way uh, for our own personal growth and therefore the collective. Is there anything that you can think of that? my service well whatever you're doing on that day is the right thing for you there is no right or wrong as to how to move into these stargates um there are people who desperately want to be doing something spiritual but they can't because they have to go to work or they've got an event going on or they're not feeling well or whatever so that you can't get it wrong as long as you are receptive as in i am receiving the energies of this stargate i am a higher dimensional being I am awakening my DNA and it is restructuring back to the organic structure uh, in its in its fullness, in its in its infinite um, presentation. And I am able to receive this energy. So as long as you have those thoughts within you, then that's that's great. But if you really want to attune with it in, in, a, in a deeper way, in, in a very aligned way, do whatever you can do to get the emotion of joy, happiness, and if you can get up to ecstasy and bliss, then even better, because then you are in that golden mean frequency within the body. And that's when you are in your sovereign self. And that's when you are compartmentalized within the in the event horizon. So if you can do whatever it takes to bring bliss into your into your being. Um, now, you can create an altar for yourself uh, where you can put things down uh, within that altar that might be a part of your manifestation. So if you yeah. want to write a book, you can actually have a picture of a little book or, you know, if you want to connect with a loved one who's passed over, have a photograph of them with a crystal or light a candle, or do all of these magical spells, however you want to be. If you want to join with others in celebration, 
some kind of um, dancing, uh, some ceremony, some kind of, of, of uh, connected focused ceremony, drum circle and you know all, all of these amazing things that you can do. Go and do those if you want to do a yoga practice. As long as you have, as long as you can remain receptive to the energies. Yeah. And that is very much about just being in a state of being. Yeah. Whatever you do is right for you, whatever you want to do to actually match that energy as best yes. as possible, yeah. move into that integ integral space, eat well, um, feel bliss, be loving, surround yourself with your crystals, go yeah. into meditation, yeah. join with another meditation, connect yeah. with all the other star seeds. All of those things are right. You can't get it wrong. Yeah, so to, 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 to try to match it, align it. I like the ecstasy yeah. part. I'm gonna have to talk to Morgan about that. I guess we're going to have to make some plans <laughs> on the 21st. But if you're uh, with your partner, you can yeah. do things to get, go out. Just, yeah. you know, the two of you, you don't have to be with others. You have each other as a connection. Go out for a meal together or yeah. go out on early nights. You know, there are yeah. many ways to connect with that energy. I'm, 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 thinking, like, I'm thinking skinny dipping at the waterfall. <laughs> I'm kidding. Or running uh, in a field. <laughs> <having a spoon. laughs> let, me, uh, let me just uh, put this up real quick. Uh, you know, this is the year of sovereignty a lot of people talk about that expansion yes. co-creation collaboration this is magentapixie.com and uh we serve ourselves we serve each other by supporting ourselves supporting each other our brothers and sisters especially someone like magenta who's been out there doing it for so long breaking down a lot of energetic uh doors for many of us in many categories to include, uh, you know, making her work, uh, her mission, her work, however you want to put it, her play, her, her work, her mission, uh, because we all know that's not an easy transition to make. Uh, you know, many of us still have uh, a 3D job and then do this on the side. And many are, in, I've talked to a lot of people recently, they're putting their 3D jobs away and they're taking that plunge. So. She's led the way for us. There's a, a very comprehensive site here. I've looked through it a few times. She's got some free stuff on it. Uh, she's got an online shop. Of course, uh, a lot of the uh, the media related stuff is here, events, uh, links to her books and such. Uh, give her a visit. Let's support our beautiful beloved sister as she supported us uh, selflessly for so long. Um, and if there's anything that you would like to share with us, or you've got anything coming up, uh, channel, light language, uh, announcement, uh, just anything, if you, you know, the floor is yours for the last few minutes. Uh, can't think of any uh, announcement. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm working on my next book at the moment and um, I'm totally dedicated to bringing that information forward. I have no idea how long that will take, but th the next book is very much about everything we've been talking about today, which is the compartmentalization of self, understanding the integral sovereign structure of who you are within that event horizon, being an infinite structure, and then making the connection with other infinite structures that are identical or are parallel to you and creating this unified grid and breaking that down into a geometric um, sixth dimensional teaching which is coming through from the nine i have no idea how they are going to present this i know roughly what it's about because that was the monadic the monad that came to me there's a lot of dark stuff too um, that is usually there that's being integrated within the next uh, book as well. But the okay. book comes as one structure, you know, so I see the book and um, this is a, will be a, a larger one. My last book was just a little tiny one, the, um, the uh, 5G book. Um, but, you know, I'll just part really and say, say, say uh, last words as in, you know, enjoy the solstice coming up. It's only two more days and so enjoy that energy connect with the starseed brothers and sisters um you only have to you don't have to go into meditation you can literally close your eyes and just ask yeah. to see all the starseeds all the awakened individuals and 
and just feel them all and know that, that you know you are part of that family of light and that we are doing well and that we are working so hard and we are reaping the benefits and we are a team and we are a family and we are we are well on, well on that mission just keep remembering that keep holding that strength we are on that mission we are doing what we came here to do even though it may not feel like it to us and hold that knowing on the day of the solstice and if we can all do that that becomes a living memory that then manifests for real that's how we're manifesting this absolutely yeah thank I you think for that so, yeah oh, so i was gonna say I, i've got a feeling there'll be a new crop circle coming out somewhere around the, the solstice in this country in england and i feel that that particular crop circle will be very significant towards dna activation and memory I don't think it will necessarily come, come on the solstice, but somewhere around that time period. So have a look out for a, a June or an early July crop circle in England, in, yeah. in southern England, and work with the geometry and the message. That's that's something that just came to me. Yeah. And the last there's been a pretty uh, the last couple have been pretty powerful from over there. I think one was on the sixth yeah. or the third. But yeah, thank yeah. you for that. Thank you for. Um, sharing space with us. Um, I look forward to future collaborations and I'm very thankful and honored um, and grateful, you know, thank to, uh, you. to be you, able Charles. to collaborate. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. You take care. Best to you and Daniel. Thank you. You take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.